Hey everyone, uh, this is uh, Jeff, LA FinTech Crypto Wars. Kind of go over the week uh, in, in the FinTech and crypto side. Um, this week, uh, there was actually still quite a bit of news and, and uh, things to digest from the previous week. And um, we're gonna kind of go through it. Um, let's see, I'm gonna share my screen right here. Hold on. Okay. Hold on a second, let me pull up. All right, so last week we saw Google and Facebook ban ICOs and uh, crypto ads within their network. And um, here, hold on, let's see. Retweeting it, there it goes. I just retweeted it. This, um, so yeah, Facebook, Google last week banned ICO crypto ads on their side. Um, now we're seeing Twitter, um, and then me too with uh, Snapchat right here. Here's Snapchat banning the crypto ads. Um, this is, I would say, coming from uh, the FTC. Um, you know, they, they're they're pretty much uh, wanting to. Uh, stay within the guidelines and not get in trouble with the FTC for uh, whatever type of violations um, So it's, it's kind of good But then it's also kind of bad for some of the ICOs that are doing marketing or if you're doing any type of crypto it makes it a little bit more difficult um, Heard uh, Bing is picking up some of these uh, type of ICO crypto marketing um, So I'm sure other networks would start picking this up so Let's see. Yeah, this was kind of interesting. This is a company called Peza. They actually got popped um, for being not being a money transmitter. They're unlicensed money service business. Um, they also got in trouble for facilitating money laundering. Um, and also on behalf of, I guess, some Ponzi schemes and some other things. But... Um, one of the brothers, I guess, took off. Um, but yeah, this is a, it's a highly regulated industry and it's very important to, you know, um, kind of follow the guidelines and the laws in the country you're in. This is kind of showing what happens if you don't. Um, and then this is actually, I talked about this last week. This is a SEC pilot program on some of the rate structure that the exchanges could charge. And so we see the buy side is pro. Um, you know, they like these low fees. Um, and I would say a, a big part of this is because their business model has been affected the past couple years um, on what they're charging. And there was actually an article a few weeks back, a few months ago, uh, funds, fund fees keep crumbling as investors go to cheap and passive investment strategies. Um, so some of these uh, mutual funds, I think they're definitely going to like the SEC's, um, you know, basically tiering some of these fee structures from the exchanges, um, but it might haunt them. Who knows? And then another interesting that came out this week, um, basically long term stock exchange. So the guys, these guys actually partner with IEX. And um, basically, they wanted to make an exchange that focuses more on long-term um, holdings of the company instead of the company's being short-sightedness. Um, currently, we do see that with a lot of the earnings that are done quarterly. So companies aren't necessarily focusing long-term. They're focusing more in the short-term. Um, so it's a pretty interesting concept, I would say. Um, you know, I think it, it's definitely something the market may need. Certain companies do potentially want to go this direction, I, I would say. Um, I guess Eric Rice is part of it um, from the Lean Startup. He's uh, one of the founders, I believe. And some of the things that the exchange is looking at, um, increased voting rights for shareholders that hold the stock for longer periods of time. Um, restrictions on offering short-term incentives to executives. Um, so there, there's a few different um, things that I think they're doing to help 
uh, companies have more of a longer term focus. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, but I think that's, that's kind of good. But it's also, um, you know, it goes back into the crypto equity and crypto assets. A lot of this stuff can actually be done on these crypto ledgers. Um, and this is actually regulators are worried about manipulation within some of these exchanges. So I think there was a meeting last week with the SEC. Brett Redfern from the SEC, he actually heads the Division of Trading and Markets. And, um, you know, I think they're kind of worried about various different types of manipulation that goes on within the markets, such as spoofing, layering, um, insider trading, things like that, pump and dump schemes. And, you know, I think they're looking to figure out, okay, what what are some of these exchanges gonna be exposed to? And as we're starting to notice, these exchanges are probably gonna be ATSs um, or an exchange, either one. Typically it's easier to become an ATS. Um, so this is, you know, the SEC, uh, they're definitely looking at this stuff on how these markets are, um, you know, how, how the micro markets work. Um, Brett actually has quite a bit of background in the markets from the Amex to Bear Stearns um, to the Chicago Stock Exchange. Um, I think even a JP Morgan Chase too. Uh, so the guy definitely has experience in market structure. Um, you know, so he's gonna probably bring a wealth of knowledge to the SEC for uh, structuring these newer type of crypto exchanges that are gonna be um, popping up soon. And I think even the Winkle brothers a few weeks back, they were actually talking about uh, some type of virtual self-regulated markets um, or self-regulatory obligate SROs, basically. So, you know, I think uh, the, these, the Winkle brothers, definitely they're, they're headed towards the right direction on, you know, keeping these markets legit. And uh, that's pretty much for the week. That was the latest things. Also, don't forget, the next LA FinTech, uh, April 20, let's see, I think 24th. So if you missed last one, check out the next one. Uh, definitely meet new people. If you're in that local LA area, come and say hi. And um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Retweet, follow, give me your hearts, whatever you can do is cool. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later.